so thank you everybody for coming to the session. And I just want to uh, introduce myself at first way so you know why the hell I'm giving the talk. And so if you want to tweet or ask questions afterwards, um, first ID is mine, it's Vara Tambien, and the second one is Cameron Wilding. So um, I'm a project manager at Cameron Wilding at the moment. I've been in the field about 10 years. And over the 10 years, I work with a lot of different platforms and industries. So I started from digital marketing really for uh, home entertainment. So I work with clients like Disney, Universal, and a lot. Um, I carried on and moved on to very important stuff, building financial tools and working in .NET for a couple of years. Um, decided that wasn't really my thing because it was contradicting a lot with my personal interests. So I was building websites for this big global organization and I was like, what the heck am I doing? And so I decided to actually focus on the first sector. So I was very, very lucky that year I made a decision was the year before the Olympics and Paralympics. So the first job I landed in the first sector was actually the Paralympics London website. So it was at that time I started using Drupal, so we're talking a few years now. Um, and I've learned a lot of different useful um, things about project manager. I think it's those are the years where I grew the most about working on complex websites, working for with third parties. And also because I started working on bigger clients and bigger budgets, I think it was really important for me to understand how I could uh, bring value to teams that are very, very big, where you have different third parties to work with and multiple stakeholders. So from then, I then moved on to basically just purely Drupal. Uh, I currently work at Cameron Wilding, different projects really, um, mainly in the publishing sector. So I work with the Telegraph to build their news up. I'm working with uh, Sage Publishing to do um, a few websites for them and projects. Um, some of you might know Carmen Wilding, but we are a media site agency based in London. Um, some of you might come to our meetups as well. Hands up who knows what we do for student guests. And the monthly Drupal beer. So we are the guys behind it. So I thought it's really, really nice what we're doing, especially from last year. We are focusing also more on uh, clients. So we noticed when we worked in the project that it's never good to make assumptions. So uh, we just took a increasing role in actually working with the clients. So now what I do as part of my role as a project manager is I run agile training, I run Drupal training, I just like coach the clients when we also deliver the project. And that for me is really important. One of the main factors where you can build the credibility that you can build that trust and loyalty with the client. So you together can work together, understand each other's business, understand better how you work together. Before I go too much into details, I went into a presentation yesterday and I realized I made some assumptions about Agile. So just for my information, how many of you just work with Agile at the moment? So and so, kind of Agile. <laughs> Okay, so I just popped in this morning a couple of quick slides, so I'm not going to divert too much, but because my talk is on Agile, I'll just give you a quick overview, just in case. So the first sketch is what a waterfall project is in our mind, and the second sketch is what Agile is in our mind. So waterfall is from what I remember, a lot of, lot of technical documentation, a nightmare, um, asking maybe, you know, the dev guys in my team to mind reading, to have a crystal ball and just guess how to do things in six months down the line, and slowly trying to 
build the project, having the client not so much involved, and um, deliver the project, reading the timeline with not much revision throughout, and fingers crossing that hopefully the client is going to like what he says after six months since the inception, since when you started the relation and you were working stages. So what Agile um, let us do instead is iteration. So the second sketch is iteration. So what Agile allows us to do is, in our case, we have sprints. So we work every uh, for sprints of two weeks. Every two weeks, we interact with the client. We give the client something to revise, to test, to play with, to confirm that we are working in the right direction. So that is iteration. What Agile allows you to do is deliver the website from the minimum viable product, slow steps towards your ideal website. And that's what's happening. During my presentation, I want to talk a bit as well about scrum ceremonies. How many of you, again, are um, aware of this terminology? Cool, most of you. So I'm not going to waste too much time on here. So if you have questions, just ask me questions. If I don't make sense later, but I'm not going to stop on this slide. Um, for me, Agile is very important. The Agile Manifesto clearly tells us that Agile is more about individuals than documentation. And this is the core of my presentation. So I think when we talk about clients, we need to stop thinking there is the client and I'm the agency here or I'm the freelancer. So I think we are all individuals. We get to know each other. We um, work together and we are very lucky because with Agile we see each other every week. That is the core. So the core is build the relationship, believe in the relationship and Agile allows you to do it very, very well. So how many of you week in, week out in the office hear about this word, be collaborative, be respectful, be hardworking, I think I hear this very, very often. And my issue is that we take these words from textbooks. We read them, we hear them in our workshops, then we ideally think it's fantastic. Yeah, I respect my colleagues. I'm not rude to them. I didn't use swear words or whatever, <laughs> you know. Um, I'm collaborative because I'm part of the team. But my issue is that in the day-to-day -day work, we don't really implement the values. So I'm here just to share a few experiences now from my past two years working with the current welding team. So if you have any questions throughout, just ask me. But I like to think that I found somehow the way to work very well with the client through Agile and with the team. That is because I applied a lot of these nice words in my daily routine in the way I work with the team and with the client. The result is I have a lot of returning clients, which is what my boss likes, I like. If I work well with the client, why not working with them again? So I think that what I'm going to talk about is the way I found to build um, the trust I need with the client to make me happy, my team happy, them happy, and possibly a whole my boss because we have returning customers. <laughs> so, as we know, the other manifesto say individuals before documentation. So, for me, communication is the core. I think it's really important. So. We all know how to communicate, and I think I need to go back to the basics here. I always talk to my clients um, at the kickoff meetings. We talk to the clients, and the first thing I do is we agree how we communicate. Why do I do that? I want them to make sure that 
style or how to reach me if there is something urgent. I want them to know to leave my team alone if something is not urgent. I want to give them different opportunities to um, raise their issues. So the way we do it here, just to give you a real uh, example, is we use emails, we use heat shots. You know what heat shot is? It comes, it's an add-on for um, Jira, so it's just a chat room. So it could be Skype, it could be Anka, it could be anything. So when I meet my clients, I go back to the basics. So I make sure they're aware of the, our scrum ceremonies. So we have plenty of opportunities to talk during the daily stand-ups, during the weekly grooming, or during the planning sessions. So everything that can wait for those meetings, wait for those meetings. Is it? Um, everything that is urgent is going to go on the room chart. So my guys know the first point of contact, if anything is urgent, um, so that I can see the buy now button anymore. My clients send us a message on a hit set and we jump on it. He knows if it's not urgent, maybe doesn't care. He sends us an email. So whenever we have time, we go to there. But we are very clear with them saying, hmm, we don't check emails, you know. Your first point of contact is hip shit. We don't have extra meetings during the week because you already have your daily stand-up and two um, weekly meetings to attend to. So that way, I set expectations with the client. So they know how to talk to me, and I also shield the team for over-communicating. We were working on a project. I took it over from someone else. When I took over the project in hip shots, we had four rooms for the same client. There was a secret room that was just internal because the team wasn't confident enough to do to use the retrospective to bring out issues. So there was like this this ranging room on hip shots. So first thing I did remove all the hip shots redundant chats and. I encourage participation during the retrospective. I think the retrospective is good in Agile because we've got a a way to in be be ourselves first of all, to be informal with the clients and just to raise issues. So I don't think it's always easy, but it's the best way. Um, be honest and open is very very important. So I always encourage the team participation, the client participation to be as truthful as possible. So if I had a shit with because the client was over communicating about no urgent stuff, if, it, if they wanted to change my screen, God no. Um, if you gave me a hard time, I'm going to bring it up. I think at the beginning it's a bit uncomfortable maybe, but I think it's very important to be honest because if you are honest and um, you go straight to the point, you build that trust. So the client knows you're not hiding anything. You are actually there. You see the problems that he sees and you want to bring resolution. Um, very important for me is be assertive. Be confident in your team. Be confident in that you're doing the right job that you are bringing value. So be collaborative here. I mean, I'm not just saying yes to everything because you're the client, I'm, I'm the agency. Be collaborative means, look, I think um, the way you're working right now is not very good. So maybe I've got a product owner that never bothered showing up, never bothered, you know, uh, bringing me the information, the feedback I need from the stakeholders. Am I going to try my best without an input or I'm going to say, look, this is not working. That's why I've got realignment meetings in there. So if it's not working, I want to do something. So for me, every meeting, every phone call, everything has got an action, a solution. So um, I think when you go straight to the point, you are honest you can find solutions. So it's we time this one um, brings to a high level of collaboration and of trust because the client know you're listening, you're observing. 
you are actually seeing what they need. Um, do you have any questions about this? Because this for me is very important. I think it's the core of everything I do. It can be internal, it can be with the high end, but this is really, uh, really important. So I think it's just matching the first item of the Agile Manifesto. So we are individual, we recognize each other as individual, and as that, we listen and we help each other. My second point, and it's really, really important, is respect. So it's a big, big word, and I really think we <coughs> do show respect not by words, but how we interact with each other. So Agile, we have the um, Scrum ceremonies, we have the daily Scrum meetings, we have the grooming, we have the planning, you have whatever you name. But just respect people's time. Just don't call a meeting if you have nothing concrete to talk about. Uh, don't overload your client agenda, you know, because they might be very, very busy people and you need to make sure you only call in meetings the right people for the meeting you're calling. So if I have um, to talk about integration, I don't call my old project team in. I might just have an initial call with the tech lead client side and my lead developer. Any solution, anything that we discuss out of there, it can be maybe waiting for the grooming session, or we might be calling in the product owner or the designer if we need to design anything new. But I think it's really, really important to be aware of, um, yeah what you're talking about, so the agenda is really important. Bringing in the right people and show up timely. This drives me nuts. So um, a lot of people, for me it's like not showing respect when you don't show up timely because I work with clients, Telegram, big time. Uh, their daily routine is probably <coughs> seven hours a meeting, one hour of work per day. So if you start not showing up on time, you have a knock on effect. So they, they, it's just not respecting of that um, business of their of their um, duties. So um, I yeah. So for every meeting, I like to speak about the retrospective a lot because that's the that's really the core for me of how I build the trust, how I improve my relationships with the clients. So I don't run a retrospective to say, oh, you weren't available this week. It was uh, it was really bad because we were blocked. You know, you didn't give us the information. We couldn't do anything. Let's move on. Let's forget about it. No. So I think always have solutions for what you discussed. So if something is not a good point, if something is sad, if something draws you mad, don't go out from that meeting without having a solution, a mitigation point, an action. And it's very, very important, have an owner of the action. Otherwise, as a team, we agree that um, we need better response time when I tell you the web service is down but we didn't talk about who is gonna act promptly on that action, so next week we're gonna have the same problem. So very, very, very important, having action, solution, um, and owners for all of your meetings. Um, I used to think um, what Agile allows you to do is getting to know your clients as individuals. So the meetings don't have to be boring, they can be fun. I think it's very important not to lose your personal touch. Um, we had an experience with the um, Imperial War Museum guys, so we were doing the front end, so with the was um, our yeah. teamer and myself working with uh, the uh, development team of the Imperial War Museum. Also, the guys uh, at, um, at the museum didn't really know Agile, so we had the opportunity to uh, grow them into understanding what Agile is and how it works. And we 
done it in a very down to earth environment, you know, it, it was like really fun. The meetings might have been long, but uh, they were useful, they still value in there. So I think like getting this personal connection is very important and uh, I never edit with a traditional, you know, project management method. So I can do it in Agile and it comes very natural because we are in the same room every other week. So it is also challenging. So uh, a lot of time our clients disagree with our priorities, with the way we run Agile. So uh, I think it's very important to get these conversations going, as Minky only said, you know, we screwed up with the development um, once again, and it's just because we were mega tired. I, something went wrong. We weren't paying attention. We uh, don't need to find excuses. Okay, okay so we did them. We made a mistake. How are we gonna make sure it's not gonna happen again? So we implement a buddy system so that if my developer is a bit distracted, I don't know baby yesterday so it doesn't care about the <laughs> deployment today um, my second developer did not keep an eye on it so we find solution we stick to the solution we talk about it and we yeah so this is what I mean when we said it needs to be collaborative it needs to be fun and it needs to um, um, allow allow you to observe, listen, and learn from each other, and I think it's very important. So I just stick this one in after yesterday because yesterday we talk about Jira. So you guys use Jira? How many of you? You use Jira? Okay, great. So yesterday I think I'm looking at you. I oh, should guess I'm waiting in our table. So. <laughs> I just stick it in because I was surprised when we asked yesterday about how many people don't share Jira with our clients. And for me, it was mind blowing. Um, a lot of our yesterday admitted we don't share Jira. I share everything. I share everything with the client. I ask my clients to add user stories on Jira. So we have a business analyst um, identify at the beginning of the project he's gonna do uh, the user story writing. We review them all together as a team during the grooming meetings. Uh, I have clients whereby we share responsibilities. We develop the website, they test it. Um, offshore testing teams. They have access to Majira, they see everything. They are part of the workflow. Is this work? Let me see. So empty, just because I don't want to share you. Nice. But um, so this is my workflow. So what I do is I start my sprint, my developer works on it, my second developer peer reviews it, my clients come in. So I want the client to be part of the process. My client is doing the testing and is gonna um, send back to my team the ticket, adding comments. It's gonna pass the ticket if I'm lucky enough um, to the down column. So my client helps me building the backlog. I'm sorry, it's huge. Uh, does that help? Okay, so <coughs> as a project manager, what I do on Jira is I open my project, I set up the board. I probably want to write placeholder tickets to kick off the conversations with my clients. So when we kick off with a new project, we have high level requirements. So what I do, I stick placeholders in. They're not stories, they're not estimated. So what happens next? As a team, we agree there is someone client side who takes the ownership of running the user story. I put them how to do it. We work together through the process. So those user stories, those placeholders are gonna become user story 
with me and the client working together. After a couple of sprints, the client works by himself. I do nothing here, I just monitor. So we have epics, we have a backlog that is prioritized, and <coughs> it's gonna add all the scope of my project in there. And slowly, slowly, we define story. So slowly, slowly, these placeholders, thanks to the client input, are gonna become user stories. What uh, my team needs to do, show up to the grooming meeting, we read the stories, we improve the story, we estimate the story. So I think, for me, if I wasn't transparent with my client, I wasn't able to do this. And this is possibly a way for me to also shield my team from uh, sorry, no. Um, from the client. So I I think transparency for me is another very, very important um, topic. They have access to everything. They have access to all my folders on Google Drive. They have access to my Jira. They are, have access to my forecasting, they have access to my uh, team capability per screen, they, my planning, they, I don't know what the rest is, Jira, everything, absolutely everything. So for me that is again, it's trust. I don't have nothing to hide. I want to share everything and hopefully they want to be part of it and they're going to take workload off me because they have access to it. They can write their own user stories, so I don't have to do it. Um, they have access to it, so if I move to Italy for a week, they can play the Scrum Master role for once. They can play with priorities. They know what we do on a weekly, sprintly basis. So that is become a, yeah, a interchangeable role with your client. You help them, they help you. I think this is what transparency honestly does to me on my project. So it's very important. Um, I consistency and timeliness. So I I do seek my project management stuff are also in my agile workflow. So I close the sprint the day before, the day after, my clients know the invoice is coming, my report is coming, my uh, budget report is coming. Um, they, uh, I have expectations, so by me being organized, they can trust me, they can rely on me, you know, they don't have to wait or chase or check that I am not overcharging them because everything is available to them. We have we have reports. I am a very visual person, so I like to see a lot of time chart. Throughout the project, I keep track of how much budget I am burning. They can see it because they have full access. So this is a very, very small example, but we started with a client whose budget was very, very low. So it was 30,000, we said, whoa, that's really low. I don't know how much we can do, uh, but we can work agile together. We do as much as possible. Uh, this is what I think I can do for sure within the budget, the rest is a question mark. So we start working together. Through timely reporting, through transparency, that's cool, just work with me and say, actually, this is going very well. We want to carry on, but we don't have the budget. So a few weeks after we were all together, they signed off on an additional 20,000 pounds. Say, okay, so we see how you work. We want to carry on. So let's stick. Let's just keep working together and so on. And that happened twice to me in a year. So where you can see, we, I started with a budget of 30,000. We signed off 40,000 more to deliver a project that they're really proud of. So. That is what transparency, being organized, being clear, go straight to the point, have this conversation with the client allows you to do. And, 
I have to inform me flexibility is going on. So what I do as a program manager, frankly, is I adopt. I don't take whatever my form master certification told me to do, and I don't allow flexibility. We are all different. We have different names. So I work with organizations <coughs> that were five people. I work with an organization that were 200. The same principles don't work for different business models. So I work with clients who are based in America, cream at me, but my stand up was at five in the afternoon because it was 9 a.m. over there. So my guys and my team, we adapted to their needs. So my stand up was 5 p.m. Um, I, I, uh, I don't know. So I observe my clients, the interaction that go with my my team as well. So I, if something is it doesn't work, we are very lucky. We have daily standards. We have the weekly growing. If I notice something is not wrong, we are all people. We have emotions. And I call my clients maybe before the movie, we go and have some coffee, I say, because maybe not everybody is comfortable to talk in front of a room of 10 people, say, yeah, I'm struggling. I don't know how to do my job, I'm lost, you know. Maybe you're proud, maybe you say it's something wrong towards me, so you don't want to talk about it in front of the project team. So. By observing, by listening to your clients, you can spot these things. You can take the client for a coffee or a nice meal, you know, and say, okay, so how are you feeling? How are you doing? So what Agile allows you to do is have access. Access to people, access to individuals. Use it, I think, is, is it's gold. Um, and always keep an open mind. Open mind, so, um, unless you know inside out of an individual how it fits in an organization, how struggling, not struggling it is. You can't really know why maybe it's being um, a bit aggressive in your meetings, you know. Maybe you've got a lot of pressure inside and internally that you don't see, so it's been aggressive with you because it wants you to do the things like you want when you want. So having this week by week relationship also also it helps a lot because you have many occasions for retrospective is the best place if you don't want to use the retrospective because you don't like to talk about your weaknesses in front of the team you go and grab a coffee but how me as a project manager I can do this like by being flexible by observing keeping an open mind try and adapt is really important there is no one way that works for everybody I think in all my projects I've done different things for each of my clients because I want them to feel comfortable. I want them to know that I hear them. I understand what they need. I understand what they need to go to. And I'm going to find the best way for them to do that. Uh, I think that's it. Um, so, uh, do you have any questions? or any of the points I've raised today. Can I ask what the retrospective is? Because it oh, yeah, sorry. Across that oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Course. Yeah, yeah. So in, uh, there are a few meetings that we run at the Agile practice. So what we do is we have a two-week um, development. At the end of those two weeks, we have a set of fun new functionalities that can potentially be released uh, to the client. So uh, in order to keep up with the communication, <coughs> the workflow, with the definition of stories, we run mainly three meetings per sprint. One is a daily stand-up, one is a, a grooming session, and one is the planning. So during the planning sessions, what I do specifically is uh, we um, give an overview of the new functionality that we've built during the past two weeks, and that is mainly led by developers. 
but also we do this retrospective. So the retrospective is we focus on the past two weeks and with the client we talk about what went not so well in terms of our way to work together or our way to deliver this, this new functionality. So we talk about what didn't go so well, <coughs> what did go well, and what drove us crazy. So it's a way for us to have an informal window outside the user story, outside the requirement, outside of me coding, to um, understand how we're working together, me as an agency and you as a client. So is there anything that we've done during the past sprint that drove you crazy so I can address those issues? At the beginning, it's not easy, so you need to encourage their participation, but it gets easier and the client will eventually see the value of having those conversations because from those conversations, you don't make the same mistake your next sprint. You have a process improvement methodology. Exactly. Yep. Other, for example, one of my clients, there are certain roles that can't add, you know, a product owner always is available. Sometimes the product owner is the PM, or sometimes the PM is also the software. So, for my selfish perspective, that is a problem because I want the person to have their time, I want them, I want them to have dedicated their time to reimburse my website. When it's a new client, that's yep. obviously more kind of fluid. So, what do you do? Do you, do you handle the process differently uh, for new clients? What would you do to sort of build that trust in, the, in what you guys deliver? Yep. So, a lot of the clients I spoke about <coughs> today were new clients for me two years ago. <coughs> so, the first thing I usually do is a kickoff meeting. So, in the kickoff meeting, I let me, let me see. So. My kickoff meeting is basically talking to. Oh, okay. I have this little template that I use for all my projects, and further responsibility is the way I open my kickoff meeting. So I explain to the client what Agile is. We run Agile. At that point, I should know because we go <laughs> through the pitching process together. and. I just stress to them what the importance is of all and responsibility on, on an agile project. So 
from my side, I'm usually the Scrum Master. Um, I go from my internal team and then I identify their team. So who is going to be the product owner on your side? Who's going to be the project manager? I start setting expectations their side as well so that for this to work together uh, and to work well, to work successfully, it means we have clear rules and responsibilities. So we expect this from you as a product owner. We expect this from your team as a tech lead and uh, a project manager. A lot of times I've got project manager client side, so that's why I focus on the scrum master role. But I think that transparency I've been talking about starts from day one. So agile is a lot of time, is a lot of commitment, is a lot of expectations from client side and they know it the first day, they start working with me. So I then we agree on the responsibilities, we all have on the same, very important. I realign the responsibilities. If I see my product owner can make half of my meetings, you're not the product owner. We need to identify someone else in the team who can take this role. So I, I think by being honest, transparent in my communication from day one, I start building the trust. So I set my expectations, I set their expectations as well. Does that answer? Yes. Okay. Um, any other questions? I go back to my previous example, so ideally, in my ideal world, if I reduce um, the agile meetings, um, not urgent is email, uh, super mega urgent is GitHub, so it's my task group. So I monitor, so the I can't, when did I start with this client? I think in September, I started with this new, this new client, and this is his admirer. So I see my role as I monitor his stuff just to make sure my team is not also moving to email requests. And that was a constant exchange of messages for anything you can think of. So my first retrospective with a client, probably they hated me for the last few months. But my previous project manager was allowing everything, saying yes to the client, always, whatever you want. And then my guys were spending half days a gift card and a half day calling. For me, not acceptable. My first perspective, I went in and was like, guys, what's going on? Like, my, my guys are totally interrupting our velocity, no, because he spent time replying to your question. Can they really not wait for the coming? Can they really not wait for the daily standard? Is there a question that only my developer can answer? Can I help? So it took me a while. It took me a while, probably three or four retrospectives, <coughs> and I'm really stubborn, and I would bring it up every retrospective. <coughs> so after four times, my client was like, okay, I got it, you know. After two retrospectives, I started seeing improvement, and it took us three or four more retrospectives not to talk about communication again. And now, that's still the odd task. That you are, can we see the update? I'm like, ah, no! <laughs> it happens. It's not gonna stop forever. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I think so. But I just go back again. It sounds really basic, but it's so important. You know, that building the relationship. So I try with a um, uh, retrospective that it's clearly not working. And I came new on a project where my developers work for the past <coughs> year. And I was like, Internally, we were complaining a lot. Internally, we were like, oh, they got this wrong. Oh, they got that wrong. And the first perspective, nobody brought up this subject. Mm -hmm. So it was like, why are we doing this? You know, I'm stuck questioning like, the agile practice. Why are we doing a retrospective if then we don't talk about the issues? So, there we go. I don't know, stubborn. Um, and uh, everybody at least was talking. 
you don't see from people to leave the right fight to uh, find the real things that are really in the world that are really that you can ignore if that person is never is never to that level and after two weeks it didn't work so um, I just sat down meaning the product owner and the project manager and I said guys I didn't see anything good so what's the deal and I admitted it was Kazi it was uh, the whisker that had not the beginning of the day or the end of the day so my guys can focus in the same two hours so I don't know if you find a way but this is like yes talk about the two big brain versions yeah this is kind of kind of a very um, interesting and eye-opening and interesting way that yeah. you do put that in there and culture of their organisation is very much like that yeah. how do you gain their trust yeah. to use a much more Then usually they are the ones who push for internal meetings with the stakeholders. And I 